As the COVID-19 crisis continues on the mainland, the Great Barrier Reef is facing its own problems with the third mass bleaching event in five years. But scientists say an innovative solution is offering hope. Cloud brightening is a technique where microscopic seawater droplets are sprayed into the air. Here's Dr Daniel Harrison, who's the project's leader from Southern Cross University. Daniel, so what uh, happens when the seawater is sprayed up into the air? Hi, Ros. Well, over the Great Barrier Reef and in some other ocean regions of the world, the clouds are in very, very clean air. So there's not very many tiny little particles floating around for each cloud droplet to condense onto. So we take this seawater and we spray it up as nano-sized droplets, and that allows the cloud to separate into more smaller droplets, which reflect more sunlight back and hopefully cooling the reef below. OK, so how effective have you found this technique to be? So, so far we've done a lot of modelling and the modelling tells us that if this works as well as we think it might, then we might be able to reduce up to about 70% of the bleaching stress on the reef during a marine heat wave. Mm. But nobody's ever tried this outdoors before. It's all been uh, lab work and modelling. And so this is the world first time that anyone's ever tried to actually do it outside. OK, we're watching shots of what looks like uh, seawater being sprayed off the back of a ship. What was that from? So over the last year, we've built with this Italian company a, a machine which resembles a, a snowmaking cannon, mm. but it's actually just taking seawater and compressed air, and it produces about a trillion tiny droplets from just half a milliliter of seawater. And so that, that gun there is producing about 100 trillion a second. So how easy, Daniel, then, is this uh, technique to scale up and to protect potentially large areas of the reef? So with the federal government a funding that's just been announced, we're going to try and scale this up over the next four years. And, and if we can go 10 times bigger than this prototype machine we were testing out, we think we can do cloud brightening over about a 400 kilometre square area. And so then that'll be large enough in a couple of years' time to start looking for the actual changes in the clouds. Right. So how have your experiments then been impacted by the coronavirus and all the shutdowns? We were extremely lucky to get this world first trial in just before the shutdowns. Uh, we lost all of our international researchers that were going to come along and, and quite a few of the domestic researchers weren't able to join us anymore either. So we actually just went with a, a core of just a few people from Southern Cross and, and the Sydney Institute of Marine Science and we, we travelled by car and camped along the way and cooked our own food to avoid any uh, risk at that time. It was really uncertain how much yeah. the virus was spreading around in the community. So this, as we've said, is the third mass bleaching event in five years. How bad has this one been? Well, this, one, this one's been pretty bad, but they've all been different. So the very first one of, of recent times in 2015, 2016 was very, very severe, but it was in a more limited region. This most recent bleaching that, that was going on all around us, actually, while we were up there doing our tests, it's slightly less severe, but it's much more widespread right throughout the reef. So, you know, these coming just every couple of years back to back is really putting the reef, as we know it, in serious threat. So if cloud brightening works as you hope it will, what difference could this make to the future of the reef? Is this the solution? Uh, it's definitely not the solution. Uh, the, the only solution that's going to save the reef in a long time is if we can really dramatically bring down our global emissions. Uh, we're already at one degrees of warming and we've got a few more fractions of a degree already locked in from emissions that we've already made. And if the reef's teetering on the edge at the moment. So we hope that the ideas like cloud brightening at a large scale, if they work as well as we hope, can just buy us a bit of extra time to really get better action on those emissions reductions. Good luck with it all, Dr. Daniel Harrison. Thank you.